From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Lavanca and welcome to Studio Bergen. This month we'll take a look back at 2012 at Bergen Community College in this, our annual year in review show. 2012 will be remembered as a year of change at Bergen, led chiefly by the appointment of career educator Dr. B.K. Walter as the college's seventh president. Dr. Walter, who took office in August after a nationwide search and appointment by the Board of Trustees, came to Bergen after serving as chancellor for Ivy Tech Community College Central Indiana Region, a school of more than 32,000 students. A native of Texas, Dr. Walter previously worked at schools such as Southern Methodist University, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Valencia Community College, as an administrator and member of the teaching faculty. She earned a doctorate in chemistry from Rice University in Houston, a master's degree in divinity from St. Paul School of Theology, and a bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Houston. When discussing 2012, no one at Bergen, or anywhere in the Northeast for that matter, will forget it was the year of Hurricane Sandy. While physical damage to the college's location was mild, all facilities were closed Monday, October 29th, and did not reopen until the following Monday due to a loss of electricity. The college's main campus in Paramus once again served as a Red Cross shelter, but even that arrangement changed as the electricity remained off. When the lights came back on and classes resumed, the members of the Student Government Association, faculty and staff began work on the Help Bergen Heal campaign, a relief effort for those affected at the college and in Bergen County. Food, clothing, and other basic necessities were collected and then distributed at a free supermarket in the weeks that followed. SGA President Margarita Valdez thanked the Bergen community for their quick and generous response. Uh, so far it has been great. As you can see, we have a lot of donations, so we're really thankful, and I can say that a lot of people came along to the SGA, so thank you so much for all your support. The college also established a hurricane help center at its main campus where affected individuals could receive access to phones, computers, showers, and meals. No year at Bergen is complete without the college's signature event, commencement. And commencement 2012 was unlike any other in Bergen history. 2,153 students donned caps and gowns, making them part of the largest class ever. Commencement, which took place at the IZOD Center in East Rutherford, May 17th, featured 51 members of Phi Theta Kappa, 42 members of the Judith K. Wynn School of Honors, and a keynote address by Bergen County Executive Kathleen Donovan. We need great leaders for the future. Leaders who are not afraid to stand up and defend their beliefs. Leaders who can mobilize their community around an idea and devise a plan of action to make an impact. Leaders who do not shirk away from tough challenges, but face them head on and approach them with the full power of their resources. Valedictorian Carolina Espen was one of 48 students graduating with a 4.0 GPA. The school welcomed me with open arms and offered me a home. It was a place where I felt safe, encouraged, and motivated to try and learn new things. I wasn't judged or ostracized for wanting to do something different or even something I wasn't used to doing. On the contrary, I was encouraged and motivated to learn and try new things. A leadership position to help others organize programs, meet different people, reach out to others, and ask for help. Professors, faculty, and staff became our role models and mentors. Preparations for Commencement 2012 were kicked off by the inaugural Graduation Salute, an opportunity for students to receive their caps and gowns, meet with representatives from various offices, four-year college reps, and a chance to win one of three iPads. Meanwhile, as leadership in the President's Office changed hands this year, so too did four seats on the college's governing panel, its Board of Trustees. James Demetrakis, James Napolitano, Anthony Miller, and alumni trustee Catherine Rodriguez all joined the board during 2012. 
Also, the board's vice chair, Sid D. Wilson, was named the chair of Association of Community College Trustees Diversity Committee. As part of the one-year term, Mr. Wilson will have voting rights on the 26-member board of directors. Mr. Wilson, who is believed to be the first person in the college's 45-year history to serve on the ACCT board, joined Bergen's board in 2006. He was recently appointed chairman of the board of the directors for the Friends of the American Latino Museum, the advocacy group that will lobby Congress to authorize the creation of the Smithsonian American Latino Museum. Additionally, in board news, before becoming the alumni trustee, Catherine Rodriguez, a former SGA vice president, helped lead a student-run effort that ultimately resulted in the board granting student representative voting rights on the panel. The board passed that resolution in May. In fact, students made headlines throughout the institution in 2012. From the annual end-of-year pinning ceremonies for School of Health Profession students to the college's top achievers at Academic Awards and Phi Theta Kappa, Bergen students carved a path to excellence in 2012 that helped prepare them for careers and transfer to the country's best four-year schools. The college's resident journalists, the members of the Torch staff, won numerous awards from the Society of Professional Journalists and the New Jersey Press Foundation. Their awards included the Best All-Around Non-Daily Student Newspaper from the SPJ and the coveted First Place General Excellence Award from the NJPF. Students Perpetua Romaine, Allison Ancina, and Ben DeBrassi received individual awards. Students also shared their talents with Bergen Stages, the college's theatrical production group, at the annual speech competition, and published work through Labyrinth and Pegasus, Bergen's annual literary compilations. Additionally, students also worked to become more involved in versed citizens and leaders by participating in the college's diversity and leadership weekends. The retreats are designed to bolster students' awareness and understanding of each other with the goal of establishing leadership skills for Bergen and beyond. Student Alexis Bravo participated in this year's Leadership Weekend. I think the biggest way to use it here is, you know, to get involved with all the other clubs. I am involved in a lot of clubs, but more to see what ideas they have rather than coming to them and telling them my ideas, asking them if there's anything they need and how they want it to be done. Bergen students' commitment to service was also evident in the dental hygiene program's Give Kids a Smile Day, a February event that offers free dental checkups for children. Students in the dental hygiene program perform the checkups. Bergen student athletes also earned their share of notoriety this year. The baseball team posted 26 wins, the most in the school's history, and the softball team finished over 500 for the first time since 1994. Golfers Young Jun Wang and Young Am Han earned spots in the NJCAA National Tournament. Also for the first time in Bergen history, the women's soccer team advanced to the second round of the Region 19 Tournament, and the women's volleyball team, a perennial contender in the Garden State Athletic Conference, once again advanced to the Region 19 Tournament, but lost its first round game. Finally in sports, assistant wrestling coach Ed Kojaki whom the record once honored as top NJ high school wrestler of the 1960s, was enshrined into the NJCAA Wrestling Hall of Fame at an event at Rochester Community and Technical College in Rochester, Minnesota. He served as the head wrestling coach at Bergen from 1977 to 1992 and from 1996 to 2004. No year would be complete at Bergen without the good work of the Bergen Community College Foundation which helps provide scholarships to hundreds of students each year. Funds are distributed to students throughout the year at events such as the May 12th Annual Scholarship Award Ceremony, where students and donors meet. More than $300,000 was awarded at that event. Events such as the BCC Golf Classic, held at Upper Montclair Country Club in June, and the St. Patrick's Day Roast and Monte Carlo Night, both held at the Stony Hill Inn, once again served as some of the Foundation's primary fundraising events. The Foundation's signature event, the annual Medallion Awards Dinner, took place in November at the Rockley Country Club. Dr. Walter, presiding over her first Medallion Dinner as Bergen President, discussed the importance of scholarships. Unlike in years past, they are all paying a much larger part 
of their college tuition and costs to get their degrees. As our tuition across the country continues to go up, it is extremely important that our foundations across the country and colleges continue to help provide critical scholarships for our students. This year's medallion honoree, Hackensack University Medical Center, was accepted by the hospital's president and CEO, Robert Garrett. Meanwhile, at the Foundation's third annual alumni dinner in April, Dot Romain, a member of the Foundation's Board of Directors and a former 12-year member of the Bergen Board of Trustees, was honored with the Living Legacy Award. Interim Associate Dean of Learning Assistance Services, Kyra Fazal, was the 2012 inductee to the Alumni Hall of Fame. The Foundation also debuted a networking event, the Quarterly Connection, in 2012, with the hope of facilitating partnerships with local civic and business leaders. President and CEO of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority, Wayne Hasselbeck, was the inaugural event's keynote speaker. Alan Kesek, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of the PGA Tour Superstore, headlined the second. 2012 will also be remembered as the year the college made great strides in enhancing its STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, programs, thanks to a $3.8 million grant. Various initiatives were constructed to spread the word about STEM majors and to assist students that may have difficulty in STEM classes. The college hosted its first ever STEM week in February. The college also took the wraps off its Emil Bueller Trust Aviation Education Center in September, which includes a flight simulator. The equipment has enabled the college to create an academic program in aviation and aeronautics. Bergen remains one of the only community colleges to maintain such a program. Coming after a short break, we'll continue our trek down memory lane for 2012 by looking at faculty accomplishments, noteworthy events, and guest speakers that visited campus. We'll be right back. Welcome back, I'm Larry Levanka. Bergen faculty consistently proved to be some of the most renowned community college professors in the country. The brightest stars of 2012 were Dr. Phil Dolce and Jim Bumgartner, who were honored for their work in and outside the classroom with National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development Excellence Awards. The pair traveled in May to Austin, Texas for the NYSAD Group's National Conference to receive their awards. If you look at this, you, you see that at this, this college, there are a lot of people who want to be ambitious to do. And the awards come in, the promotions come in from the side. Uh, I'm, I feel very fortunate to be sitting here <laughs> with my colleague um, because he deserves this. He's ambitious to do. Both. And, and it's, it's, it's great because uh, both Phil and I were nominated by other faculty uh, here um, for, for what we do. And, and so it's an honor to be chosen and selected. And then it goes to uh, a committee and then they decide um, um, if, in fact, uh, which of the nominations uh, will get awarded. And uh, I think it was the first time in a long time, if ever, that two of us were nominated and, and we both uh, uh, are, are winners. So it's great. Fellow professor and counselor Win Win Key who appeared on this program in December, earned the New Jersey Community College Counselor Association's Award for Counselor Excellence at a November ceremony. The college also retained Fulbright Scholar Dr. Gang Zhao 
of China for an in-residence teaching position at Bergen last year. Teaching English in the American Language Program and Intercultural Communication, Dr. Zhao also assisted with curriculum development. College faculty also continued their work regarding a long-standing interest at Bergen, the suburban landscape, by leading such events as the dark side of suburbia, aging in suburbia, African-American women in suburbia, and wildlife in suburbia conferences, where Professor Leslie Lynn said Bergen County animals are undoubtedly smarter than the average bear. The way I look at it is for any kind of animal to get into Bergen County and not be roadkill the next day, they have to be a smart animal. Uh, we have so many roads, uh, there's so much congestion, that trying to get from one place to another is just a marvel that they can do it here in Bergen County. Additionally, Professor Jamie Keller's group, Spark a Change, a community service organization, hosted the Out of the Darkness Suicide Prevention and Anti-Bullying Walk at the main campus in April. Dozens of students, faculty and staff, and members of the community participated in the event that aimed to educate, promote personal wellness, and raise money for various causes. Also last year, Professor Harold Kahn's annual Greyhound Adoption Day once again drew a crowd of dog-loving students, faculty, and staff in September. Finally, within the faculty ranks, three former Bergen professors were bestowed the rank of Professor Emeritus at a May luncheon. Joining only 34 others who have earned this designation, this year's inductees were Jane Meehan and posthumous inductees Dr. David Kevitt and Gerald Mizell. Dr. Gary Porter reflected on the trio's work at the college. We have three professors, not all of them with us, not all of from the same department or discipline. Their contributions are many and long and noteworthy. Their students will never forget them. And it is appropriate indeed that we never forget them and they join the ranks of our other emeritus professors. Meanwhile, past president Dr. Judith K. Wynn returned to Bergen in May for the official opening of the School of Honors, which bears the name of the college's fourth president. Dr. Wynn served the college as president from 1995 to 2007. Dr. Wynn was humbled by the honor. It's just an absolutely wonderful thing to be able to have your students so well prepared that they can go into absolutely any environment uh, to Rutgers, to state colleges, to Ivy League schools, and be able to succeed and go beyond what other students who had been there from freshman year were able to do. Also in 2012, a bevy of big-name guests visited campus to foster discussion among students, faculty, and staff. Among them were two Pulitzer Prize winners, Isabel Wilkerson, who wrote The Warmth of Other Sons, and Jennifer Egan, who discussed her work the Goon Squad during her March visit. I wrote what I thought was a short story. I got a little intrigued by a quick mention of a minor character in that and ended up writing a second one, finally a third, and at that point I thought, okay, let's, let's face it, I'm not writing the other book, I'm writing this book. And, uh, and I basically proceeded following my own curiosity to create um, a collection of, of pieces that I tend to think of myself as something like a concept album. It's a big story told in parts that sound very different from each other, but are in fact, hopefully, working together to, uh, to evoke the world. Foreign dignitaries such as UN Ambassador Palitha Kahona of Sri Lanka, former U.S. Ambassador to the UN, C. Chan Siv, Council General of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Harold Robertson, and Egyptian author and women's rights advocate, Nawal El Sadawi, also made appearances this year. Perhaps one of the most inspiring visits of the year was that made by Kyle Maynard, who lives without limbs. During his remarks, he discussed his experience as a high school wrestler and 2004 ESPY Award winner. And they would make this blanket judgment to go and say it's completely impossible for a guy without limbs to ever win a match. Problem was, is like I believed it for a while. When we believe something, we make it true. Like I said, you know, it's not just me that's heard that before, too. That your dream, what you wanted to go into doing in your life was, was impossible. It's a lie. 
What's important is what you decide. Not anybody else around us. I mean, yeah, people influence our beliefs all the time, but you've got to go and decide that for yourself. Members of the Eyewitness News team from WABC Channel 7 in New York conducted a town hall meeting at the college early in the year, serving as a prelude to the station's chief meteorologist, Bill Evans, speaking at numerous events and ultimately teaching a school of continuing education class. Continuing Ed and the Bergen Community College Women's Institute also hosted a number of big names last year, including Senator Robert Menendez, environmental advocate Deidre Imus, and author Mary Higgins Clark. The school also debuted its popular Bagels and Business program this year, a morning networking lecture for business professionals. Down in the Meadowlands at Bergen's newest facility, the academic location at 1280 Wall Street West in Lyndhurst, nearly all construction and renovation projects have been completed, including classrooms, student service areas, and the much anticipated conference center. The renovations, including the library, bring the facility a step closer toward the goal of one day becoming a full-scale branch campus. At Bergen's third location, the Siarco Learning Center in Hackensack, 2012 marked a year of continued growth and prosperity. Siarco frequently hosts art exhibitions of those from the community as it continues to serve as the college's adult learning center for ESL and GED courses. In recent years, Siarco has also become a satellite facility for credit courses. The Bergen Small Business Development Center also resides at Siarco. Meanwhile, Campus-wide, the college takes time each month to recognize various ethnic, cultural, and awareness groups. 2012 was no different. Celebrations included those for Black History Month, Native American Heritage Month, World Week, and Interfaith Week. Another group the college takes time to recognize, not only each month, but all year, are the hundreds of U.S. military veterans that are enrolled at Bergen. 2012 included the February Veterans Re-Entering the Workforce Education and Career Conference when more than 100 veterans attended to speak with employers and learn new skills for transitioning back to civilian life. Later in the year, representatives from the Combat Paper Project, an art therapy program, conducted a four-day workshop with Bergen Vets. The program centered on a process that ultimately creates sheets of paper out of former military uniforms allows vets to share their experiences and thoughts through art and words. Of course, the college also rolled out a red, white, and blue carpet on Veterans Day with a ceremony and procession to the American flag located near the college's main entrance. Also in 2012, Bergen once again hosted college fairs for students seeking transfer to four-year schools and job fairs aimed at those students looking to enter the workforce. Technology also played a critical role in 2012 as the college unveiled a new homepage design for its website. The new homepage features a streamlined horizontal orientation designed for widescreen monitors, which have become standard. Additionally, the page features a dramatic cache of photos featuring Bergen students, faculty and facilities, a rotating banner announcing events and programs, and a cable news style ticker that is updated throughout the school day with information and special messages. The college also took its first steps in implementing a student service application called Portal at my.bergen.edu, which aims to bring all student web functions under one banner, including Moodle, student email, and the former application known as WebAdvisor. No discussion of technology at the college would be complete without mentioning its booming social media network, headlined by its Facebook page. To date, the page remains the most followed community college page in the state with more than 10,000 followers. The page's utility was reinforced during Hurricane Sandy when it averaged more than 38,000 interactions per day during the eight-day period, breaking all previous highs for status update likes, comments, and shares, and overall new page likes per day. As we bring this year to a close, we'd like to leave you with an image that became the signature photo of 2012 at Bergen, the new tradition known as the Big Pick. Taken in November, the Big Pick featured faculty, staff, and students who gathered between the Student Center and West Hall for the photo as the college's photographer directed the scene from high atop Pitkin. 
The photo will be hung in the student center with the expectation that the big pick will become a yearly event. Thanks for watching our year in review here on Studio Bergen. We'll be back next month with the latest news from the spring 2013 semester. Thanks for watching and take care.